Somebody give God's name praise tonight. Somebody give God's name praise tonight. I said, somebody give God's name praise tonight. I said, somebody give God's name praise tonight. Come on, your speech is too low and you move too slow. I said, somebody give God's name praise tonight. A little more sound, but I got to do this until Saturday. I said, somebody open your mouth and give God's name praise tonight. The Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Can you do me a favor? Can we honor God for our pastor tonight in the person of Bishop Charles Johnson III? Y'all so shady in Detroit. I said, can we thank God for our pastor in the person of our bishop? God bless you, Bishop Johnson. Um, I thank God for good leadership. Um, but can we thank God for the fragrance of the house um, herself, the one and only Lady Kelly, awesome woman of God. She walks with such grace. I'm so honored, my brother. He is the pastor of the House of Hope, the Winners Assembly. My brother is here, Pastor Vincent Bohannon. Can we thank God for him tonight? Can we also thank God for my pastor, one of the greatest pastors on the East Coast, Bishop S.Y. Younger. Can we thank God for him? Um, one of my good friends snuck in the room tonight. Uh, he told me he was coming. I didn't know if he was going to be late, if he was going to be on time, but I'm glad he made it. Can we thank God for Jesus tonight? That's how you thank God for Jesus? Come on, Joe. I came to have church. I flew too long. I said, can you thank God for Jesus? I don't know what's going on. Where, where's my section at? Because I need to know. I said, can you thank God for Jesus? You know, there is a feature, uh, and I'm going to thank God for my brother Carlos. There's a feature before I let you be seated. Um, I have an addiction. Y'all got to pray for me. I have an addiction to Amazon. And, okay, I just want to make sure. And I don't need, and I don't need rehab. I don't, I'm good. Um, I have an addiction to um, Amazon, and um, there's this feature called Prime. Woo! Thank you, Lord. And what I love about Prime, Carlos, is that um, on certain items, because I pay a fee every month, not only is the shipping free, but sometimes I can get the item next day. And based upon what you paid for last year, you've got 30 seconds to open your mouth because this next praise is an overnight miracle. I said this next shot is an overnight miracle. I said, it's overnight. You ought to open your mouth. I said, where's my section? I don't understand. I need the people of God that believe tonight that by this time tomorrow, yeah, everything will turn around. God's going to do it any day now. Carlos, thank you. The time is far spent. Acts the 16th chapter. Can you grab your Bibles? Grab your Bibles tonight. Whether it's your phone, hey friend, whether it's your phone or your iPad, hey MJ, it's good to see you, man. Whatever your uh, device is for your scripture, can you grab that? Thank God for my brother, telling me, brother Josh in the organ. Can we thank God for him tonight? Acts, the 16th chapter. Very familiar text. I thank God for Sister Kelly, who drove 2,000 miles per hour to get me to the church safely. Can we thank God for her? I said, thank God for her. I'm a safe. Don't worry about me. I'm a safe. No. I thank God for her. Now, um, Bishop, I was a little upset because... In the car, um, in the car, Bishop, she was soft spoken, and I didn't know who she was when I walked out here. Because I was like, that looked like the same girl that was driving me, but there's no way. Because in the car, she was like, Yeah, I've been a part of the church since June. 
I said, my God. So we thank God for good, wor good worship. Can we get thank God for the worship team? Can we thank God for the Levites and the minstrels tonight? Okay, come on. We, pour, we play until you get your breakthrough and we go home tired. Can we thank God for the Levites and the minstrels tonight? Acts the 16th chapter. There's one more person I'm going to thank God for in a minute, but I want to read this scripture. Acts the 16th chapter, very familiar text. I only have a Bible study lesson. I'll preach you say amen. Those are our instructions tonight. Class, the 20th verse of Acts the 16th chapter. Verse 20. Thank God for all of our online viewers. And he brought them to the magistrate saying, These men being Jews do exceeding trouble in our city. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. Verse 24. And having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. Verse 25, the B clause. And the prisoners heard them. I'll make sense out of this text in a minute. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Father, give me this house, put Pentecost in my mouth and apostolic in my feet in Jesus' name. Um, lastly, I thank God for friends. I thank God for good leadership, but I also thank God tonight for uh, the apple in my pie and the woman who cools my ice cream, my wife. I thank God for Lady Desiree Mickey, who's watching. I love you and my two children. Um, friends, my brother, I'm sorry, I'm married. Y'all forgive me, please. Um, my brother brought me here to preach a meal, but brother, basically if I preach a snack, don't invite me back. Uh, do me a favor and can you agitate your neighbor and say neighbor? You don't have the right to be quiet. I said, say neighbor. You don't have the right to be quiet. My brothers and sisters, it is extremely indicative that we understand where we are right now in the body of Christ. We are in a good time. We're in a good season. I'll do my best, man. We're in a good time. We're in a good season. I understand um, that the presidency just changed hands. But what I would tell you is that God is still on the throne. So I'm not worried about who's in the White House. <laughs> um, while we are dealing with coronavirus all around us, I didn't come tonight to talk politics to you. I've come tonight to encourage you um, that you are on the cusp of the breakthrough you've been waiting for for the last two years. I've come to prophesy to you tonight to let you know that you have an assignment that every person on your role has to get to destiny and it is your job to make sure they arrive tonight. It is such a responsibility, but I understand who I'm talking to. I'm talking to people who want to see people around them win. Okay, I'm going to see who's really in the house in a minute. There are people around, there are people in this room that want to see the people around them win. You're not jealous and you're not focused. Um, when something happens for somebody around you, you don't consider yourself first. I only have five talkers, but it's fine. I said, you don't consider yourself first. But I want to talk to some people tonight that believe if the person next to you got it, you must be next. I need to talk to some people tonight that know that if God's in the neighborhood, that he must be on your street. And if he's on my street, I might as well come out on the porch. Maybe he wants to talk. I need to talk to some people tonight that believe and that can decree that God's going to do something so big that you're going to need to call your whole family back together in order to receive the harvest. Oh, Lord. I said, God is about to do something so big. He's going to make sense out of the transition you've been experiencing. I need to talk to some people tonight that's been trusting God, but it looks like there's no tracking number, Lord. I said, you've been trusting God, but it looks like there's no tracking number on when it's going to deliver. I just told you that that last shout qualified you for an overnight miracle, but there's a part I did not tell you. There's a part I did not tell you. What I also enjoy uh, about Amazon is that Amazon has a feature that it will tell you if your package was delivered even if you're not at the house. 
And I need some people tonight that can decree that while you're praising God here, God's delivering everything to your address. Sound man, can you put this in the monitors? I got three more days of this. I said, while you're praising God, God's going to do something at your address that's going to change everything about your life. This isn't about money, how? Thank you, sir. It's not about money, houses, or cars. God's about to restore my peace. Where the praise is at? God's about to restore my joy. This is revival. And when we are revival, something has to be set again or set differently. Brother Organist, we are in a reset revival. Reset revival. Things have to come back in order. We're in a reset revival. And it's not, it's strange to me almost. Because even back home at the Ramp Church, Bishop has been talking about revival for the last 30 days. And I've been trying to figure out what is this revival that we've been talking about? Why do we keep talking about revival? Well, for those of y'all that can receive this, I believe strongly, Bishop, in my spirit that the kingdom is talking about revival is because the church is about to get its power back. I really wish you'd talk. Okay. I don't know what's... I need this sound to talk to me. I said the church is about to get its power back. Miracles haven't left the church. Faith has left the people, our Lord. Okay. See, miracles can only happen where there's faith. But I believe that in this year, 2021, the people of God were getting our faith back. And there's a great revival that's about to hit the world, that's about to hit the kingdom at large. It's not just going to hit the Pentecostals. Uh -oh. It's not just going to hit the Apostolics. But there's a revival that's going to rise up in the Baptists. Y'all going to play hard to get to this. There's a revival that's getting ready to rise up in the believers. And I need somebody in this room tonight that does not need a musician. I need you to open your mouth because God's about to set the world on fire. Oh, I need you to open your mouth because revival is about to break out. Revival. Revival. But the only way we can have revival is we've got to submit ourselves back to prayer. Lord, all right. We attend Sunday services, but prayer service is the most least attended service in church okay all right if you're going if you're not going to talk to me now don't dance with me later i said prayer is the most least attended service in church because prayer requires patience see when you pray you've got to be willing to sit and wait on god lord and tonight I believe that the prayer wheel is getting ready to turn in this room in a few moments because there's a sound of intercession that already rests in this church. There's a sound of intercession that already rests well in this room. And I believe that the sound that's going to be lifted from AMC tonight is going to get the attention of heaven. Lord, and there's going to be like an Azusa experience that's going to break out in Detroit. Why are you playing hard to get? That's going to be an experience. Well, I'm talking about miracle signs and wonders are getting ready to hit this city like never before. But you've got to be submitted to prayer. Paul and Silas are on their way to prayer in this damsel. This young girl. I don't want you to think I can't preach them in your Bible. This young girl, she has a spirit. She's a fortune teller. I'm going to mess up your theology. She's a prophet. <laughs> Uh-oh. She's a prophet. She's a prophet. But she's getting her information from the wrong realm. She's a prophet. She's getting her information from the wrong realm. She's a fortune teller. She's a psychic. And she's telling them, She's exposing them. These men are men of God. They're doing the work of the Lord. So I want to learn you something real quick. You got to be careful of prophets that constantly tell you where you've been, but they never tell you where you're going. 
I'll do my best, sir. Thank you for helping me. I said, you got to be careful of prophets that constantly tell you where you've been, but they never tell you where you're going. I don't have time to talk about who I was and where I've been. Okay. Oh, see, you won't play haunted. I said, I don't have time to talk about who I was and where I've been. I want to know what is God getting ready to do. Okay, what is God getting ready to do for my family? What is God getting ready to do in my life? It's not, it's not just about blessings. What is God getting ready to set in order for me? I've been praying and fasting for something specific. And I need God to move before this month is over. Lord have mercy. I need God to do something before February the 1st. Because I've been trusting God. Bishop said something so true. And some of y'all was trying to act like you was ashamed. He said in the pandemic, people were buying houses. People were buying I bought my car last April. They was trying to get it off the line. I moved in the same year. Because the, the world was in the pandemic. Uh-oh. No, you missed what I said. I said the world was in the pandemic. And for 19 of y'all that can be honest, God has been so good, I forgot we were struggling. Thank you. He's been so good, I forgot they said we was in a struggle. I made more money in the struggle than I did when I was grinding. I made made more money in the struggle. And I realized, I realized that when you're part of the kingdom, the kingdom doesn't go into recession. Now, I'm going to say something that's a little foreign to y'all. That might be foreign to some people. And hopefully some of y'all will talk to me. I realized that not only was God blessing me because I was obedient, but I was reaping the seeds of being a tither. Yeah. Okay, we don't talk about tithing in church no more. Because I was obedient. And I realized... I had to be submitted to what God had said. Watch. Because when you're really anointed, when you really have a charge, there's certain things that you can't do, and there's certain things that you cannot allow in your space. Oh, oh. i got to hurry up and get to the hoop. I said, when you're really anointed, there's certain things you can't allow in your space. You can't let everybody cuss around you. It's going to get hard. It's going to get tight in a minute, but I want you to say amen anyway. You can't let everybody talk about what they want to talk about. When you're truly anointed, even conversation, when it comes down to gossip, you've got to be able to ignore certain conversations. My bishop would say, you got to have a holy separation. You can't treat me like you treat the rest of your friends. You can't talk to me like you talk to your co-workers. There's something about me. There's an anointing on my life and you just can't treat me any kind of way. Paul got tired because he realized there was a spirit that was following him. He cast the spirit out. He cast the spirit out. She's free. The merchants get mad. I've never been to a church where somebody got free and somebody got upset. I said, I've never been to a church where somebody got free and people got upset. Church I come from, you get free, it turns straight into like, knuck if you buck. Like, we go. Here's my problem, friends. The magistrates got mad because they could no longer benefit from who she was. And for those of y'all that can receive this, we can fly through this text. Uh, Josh, you can take a break. I need five of y'all to open your mouth and praise God because God is getting rid of people who've been taking advantage of your anointing. Okay. Uh, See, it's going to be hard for some of y'all to praise him because some of them same people got your same last name. But I need you to open your mouth and praise God because there have been people who have been taking advantage of who you are. But tonight, their control has been loosed. Tell somebody, I'm free tonight. I said, tell somebody, I'm free tonight. Uh-uh. Now take that Catholic out your throat. I said, tell somebody, I'm free tonight. Yeah, I'm free from their opinions. I'm free from their control. I'm free from their manipulation. I'm free from it tonight. Won't have me feeling bad for being different. And so the magistrates get upset. They catch Paul and Silas being publicly. They're humiliated. 
I don't want to deal with this because nobody in church has ever been humiliated, so it's okay. But for those of us who've ever had to walk in church and you didn't know who knew your business, These saints ain't loyal. I said, if you ever had to walk in church and you didn't know who knew your business because you'll find yourself in places where you have to be careful of people you connect to. I'm afraid of people. Man, I'm not talking to you because I feel strong. I'm afraid of people that when they get upset, they spill business. Okay, I'm afraid of people that the moment they get upset, they come to me and start running their mouth about somebody. I'm good. Let me tell you why. Because the moment you get mad at me, see, it's, see, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful of people. I'm going to help you. You've got to be careful of people that have to give up information in order to feel important. Okay. See, be careful of people that have to give your information in order to feel validated by people. You've got to be careful. Oh, God, you, you've got to be careful. These, these men of God are humiliated in front of the crowd. And the jailer gets a charge. He says, thrust them into the inner prison. Shackle their hands. Shackle their feet. So in other words, um, when this storm begins, they can't dance their way out of this one. I didn't say we wasn't going to dance. I said they can't dance their way out of this one. They find themselves in a situation where they are forced to open up their mouth. And maybe, just maybe, God has you in a squeeze because he's trying to get you to open up your mouth. Maybe, just maybe, God has you in a place where he's trying to get you to open up your mouth because the power of death and life is not in your feet and it's not in your hands. It's in, okay, it's in your, it's in your tongue, it's in your mouth and you've got to learn to open up your mouth. If I wanted to take a subtopic tonight, I'd take the subtopic talk your way out of it. You've got to find yourself in a place where you've got no other you've got no other option but to open up your mouth. My father, a couple years ago when I was living with my father, I was in the basement of the house. If you've ever followed my ministry, you've heard this story. I was in the basement of the house, Josh, and I heard this big boom. Didn't know what happened, so I ran upstairs, and I went to that place. I said, Dad, are you all right? He said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. And I went back downstairs. It didn't dawn on me until later in the evening. My father said, how did you know where to come to? I said, Dad, I don't know. I just ran to where I heard the sound come from. Lord, and I need some people in this room tonight that can open up your mouth and you know that heaven will run too where the sound comes from. I don't need anybody in this room that wants to stay in the place that you're in. But there's somebody in your space that might be in a mental prison. I need you to take a dress rehearsal. You don't need any music. I need you to take a dress rehearsal and open your mouth and let that Devil know you're still alive. No, I said, let that devil know you're still alive. You tried, but you failed. Everything you tried, you failed. Thought I was going to go crazy. No, sir. Thought I was going to lose it. No, no, no. Thought I was going to break under pressure. Absolutely not. I'm still. And so, they're in jail. Try. They're in jail. I'm going to get you like four minutes. We won't catch a flight. So they're in jail. And they've got to make a decision. I'm in your Bible. Um, um, they start having a conversation around midnight. Now, I want to help you um, that there is no 
specific, uh, there's no specific uh, revelation behind them opening their mouth at midnight. Now, sometimes we, you know, we'll be a little deep and spooky. Deep folk drown. We'll be a little deep and spooky, try to, you know, figure out. But if you want one, I'll give you one. Weeping may endure for night. But joy. Weeping may endure for night. But joy. Weeping may endure for night. But joy. Let the keyboard play, I enjoy it. Weeping may endure for night. Sir, you seem like you know the Bible quite well. But joy. Weeping may. It's a possibility. It might. There's a chance you might cry. But, which negates everything before it. Joy is not optional. Okay. Weeping may endure for a night. Um, there, was a, there was a clause I realized a long time ago. And I had a little issues in school, so y'all uh, pray for me. My bus was the regular length, but I should have wrote the short one. So here's my problem. The problem was, um, it took me a while to realize that at 11.59, it was one time. But once it said 12, colon, zero, zero, not only was it a new time, but it was a new day. Weeping may endure for a night. 11.59 p.m. Postal reading. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Some of you might miss this prophetic declaration, but if you can agitate your neighbor one more time and just say, neighbor, survive until the morning. No. Some of you, some of you have been frustrated because you've been trying to figure out the night season. But you've got one job. Tell somebody, survive until the morning. It's only one moment. All you have to do is survive, survive, survive until, survive until the morning. We all haven't boarded yet. Hold on. Survive until the morning. Just hold on until the morning time. I said, because weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, joy comes in the morning. At midnight, Paul and Silas are the praise leaders. Tonight, I want you to understand that everybody, you got a job. You're either going to be Paul, hey, star, or you're going to be Silas. But you got to be one or the other. Paul said, one of us going to call him. The other one's going to thank him. And they begin to praise God. Your Bible never teaches you that prisoners participated. Your, your Bible never says to you that the prisoners got in the praise. I can probably imagine in my sanctified mind that the prisoners were probably telling Paul and Silas to keep quiet, be quiet. We've been here long enough. You don't know how, you don't, they're never going to come and see about us. But Paul and Silas realized that the praise they had in them was bigger than the situation that they were in. Let me say that. I said, the praise that they had on the inside of them was bigger than the situation that they found themselves in. And the problem is every time you find yourself in a squeeze, you try to glorify the circumstance. But I need some prophetic people in the room tonight that realize if you can just get a praise on your mind, Lord. I said, if you, can, if you can just get a praise on your mind, that you've got enough praise in you that can change the very situation around you. I need about 10 praises in this school. If you know there's enough praise in you to change your circumstance, I need you to take the next 15 seconds and open your mouth right now and praise him because things are changing now. They're turning around. They're turning around. I 
out for the praise of the answer. They're turning around. They're turning around. So as you open your mouth tonight, you've got to realize you don't have the right to be quiet. Because there's somebody that is depending on yourself. You've got to understand that when you open your mouth tonight, that you've got to shoot the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. That when you open your mouth, that something is going to happen. Is there anybody in the room tonight that believes that God is about to do something in your life? I said, is there anybody in the room tonight that believes that God is about to turn some things around? You've been crying and you've been waiting for a day like today. But I come all the way from Lynchburg, Virginia. My flight was delayed until 4 o'clock. I could have complained, but I made it to let you know that if you can open up your mouth, God will open the door, Lord. I said, if you can open up your mouth, God's going to open the door. Is there anybody in the room tonight that needs God to open up a door? Oh God, I need you to open up a door. I need you to work something out. I need you to figure something out for me. I need you to work it out for my family. And so tonight, when I open up my mouth, this shout is for my bloodline. My family may not be here. But when I open up my mouth, I believe that God is going to turn something around. I, I believe that God is going to do something so big tonight that it's going to take days for me to unpack it. I said, God, God's going to do something so big tonight. It's going to take days for me to unpack it. I've been crying and I've been waiting, but they that so in tears shall also come on, Jimmy. We've been joy. So I'm here to let you know tonight that if you can open your mouth, God's gonna do something that's gonna change your life. If you can open your mouth, Paul and Silas, they opened up their mouth and to the foundations the prison was shaken. They opened up their mouth until there was an earthquake. Can I let you know that your praise has the power to move the earth? You're not listening to what I said. I said, your praise has the power to move the earth. The crazy part is that only the prison was shaken God has the power that when he hears your praise to move the obstacle that's been holding you back. You don't have the right to keep your mouth shut. You don't have the right to keep quiet because somebody is waiting for your hallelujah. Somebody is waiting for your thank you, Jesus. Let's go to that that somebody is waiting for your thank you. You gotta open up your mouth because God is taking you higher as you praise him. He's taking you to another level. I can feel the deliverer in this room. I just see the praise that can jump in the spirit. Praises jump in the river. The water is trouble, and God is about to do something. But you gotta jump in the river, get in the spirit, get in the spirit, come out of your flesh. I know you're tired, it's a midweek service, but get in the spirit. You don't have the right to keep your mouth shut because if you open up your mouth. God will open the door, and I see a door about to open for you by Friday, 9 o'clock in the morning. Check your email, check your text message, 
Lord is about to open the door. All you gotta do is open up your mouth. We're going higher tonight. 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 Anybody wanna go higher? 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 So open up your mouth all over this room and shout.
Come on, intercessors. I need somebody to walk this floor. Father, right now, we charge this atmosphere. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on. I just want the prayer warriors, too. Come on, I need some intercessors to walk the floor tonight. Come on, intercessors. Father, turn in the name of the Lord Jesus. We charge this atmosphere. And we decree tonight that you're walking me out of our faith. Father, tonight, we come to you. Father, decree tonight. That you're turning things around. Father, tonight, we decree for that you're doing something that's changing our very life. Father, tonight, we decree for that you're doing something that's changing our bloodline. Come on, intercessor. Deliver tonight, deliver tonight, deliver tonight, deliver tonight. 
trying not to be active. But I feel a charge coming, Brother Drum. And God's about to shoot us to the spirit world. Who are the other man? Hey, listen. I need you to do me a favor. And I don't really, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck you up. And I don't want to coach you. So when I count to three, I don't know why I feel this. But I need the whole house to shout, deliver. Something's gonna break out in the region. Hey, hmm. something's gonna break out in this region. And every demonic force, every demonic force, every every chief demon, every witch and every warlock that's been trying to launch out here in many assignments. Not as in multiple, many, M-I-N-I, -I, small assignments, because it's a small foxhole. Many assignments, just small ones, to try to throw the people off track. Because, thank you, Bishop, trying to derail the people of God. Because the truth be told is if you be honest, you're growing and you're pushing. But you know one wrong move will take you back. But tonight... I heard the Lord say I'm about to seal your past by fire. I need this whole house to shout deliver. When I count to three. I want this whole house to shout deliver. And I want you to shout it like there's somebody in your family you need God to do something for in the next five minutes. It may not be for you, but there might be somebody in the house you weren't going to do something for. When I count to three, I want this whole house to shout, deliver, and something's going to break in this room. What? You better posture yourself. Because for those of us who have a charge, something's going to turn in your belly. And you're going to feel revival break out. One, two, three, deliver!
making music. Open your mouth right now. You don't have a right. Come on. Put your praise on assignment. That's it. The altar's open. Come on. Come on. This is this is revival. You don't have a right to be silent. Come on. The deliverer is here. Come on, intercessors. If you got it in your pocket, come drop it on the altar. If you got it in your car, go to the car and get it. Tonight is the night for deliverance. You don't have a right to be quiet. Open your mouth. Hands lifted. I said my job. Tell you something. Tonight, hear me. I know I keep telling you something like, why you don't, why you don't keep opening our mouth? Because it's a sign that God can send your stuff somewhere. He needs an address. And hear me. Hear me. For 30 seconds. That's all you got to respond. I need this whole house to open your mouth right now. Hear me. And I need you to let the sound of worship hit this room. Why, prophet? Because as of right now, your life will never be the same. Open your mouth all over this room. From my left to my right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You don't have that right to be quiet. You don't reserve that right. You have an assignment. You have an assignment. something in this room 
that will never be revoked. It cannot be ignored. It cannot be rejected. And so, Father, I thank you tonight that the change has been activated. I thank you tonight that the prison doors have flown open and somebody's coming out of jail tonight. I thank you tonight that you've done it for your people. And tonight I thank you that we have gotten back in the position that we don't have a right, that we don't have a right to be quiet, that we don't have a right to be quiet. So Father, I thank you for doing the work. Thank you for doing it in us. 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 We're getting rid of the soul people of God. But I'm going to give you my, I'm going to give you 60 seconds of my last time with you together. And I want you to open your mouth and praise him. Because this time you're never going back. This change cannot be rejected. And I want you to praise him because God just gave you a new normal. Praise him now. God just gave you a new normal. I said God just gave you a new normal. yourself and say my normal just changed I said God just gave you a new normal God just it's 10 o'clock we gotta go I gotta hurry up I'm sorry because I want I want Bishop to invite me back I want to be like I was long winded I just it's hard for me I have Friday night church everywhere I go. I have Friday night church on a Monday. <laughs> it's all. So I, here it is. Here's my problem. Um, and some of y'all, this may not be your testimony. I remember a couple years ago, I used to swipe my card by faith. I'd be like, Lord, if it be your will, let this go through. I'd be like, God... Lord, please. I swipe my car by faith. Now? Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. My wife gets mad because I, I don't even look at the bill. They bring it to me, and before she can even show me the bill, I give her my car. My, my wife be like, you didn't even look at the bill. I said, it don't even matter. I know I got it. And I said, I need you to open your mouth because God just changed your normal because now you know you got it. I don't have to question. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. 
favor. We gotta go. But God just changed my normal. Now I know I got. I need you to praise him right now. I'm your MD. I need you to praise him right now. Because there's a part in the text you didn't see. When the doors flew open, it wasn't one door. All the doors flew open. I need you to praise him because God just gave you options. Praise him.
of his yes. Somebody is attached to your yes. Please be seated before God performs a midnight miracle. Be seated. Well, well, help her. 